So this is a tip that I thought most people knew, but I replied to a post on Twitter about this and it's cropping reference planes in a Revit family. So a lot of times if you have a Revit family and your reference planes are all extending forever past the geometry, I have a 3D room tag family open in this example. The reference planes are pretty nice just because I built this family and I went back and QA'd them, but it's still an example I can mess with. If you're interested in 3D room tags, I do have a link below. I have a plugin for it or Dynamo graphs, go check them out. Anyway, within this 3D room tag, I have reference planes because that's controlling geometry. If I wanted to crop all these down to any reasonable area all at once, there's a lot of different ways to do that. And one of the easiest ways to do this is with a scope box. However, if you go to the view tab or the annotate tab, scope box isn't an option in a regular Revit family. However, if you were to go and start a new blank file, so I'm just going to start a blank project here. I'm going to click on that. I'm in a plan view. If I go to view, I should have the ability to draw a scope box. So under the view tab, the create panel scope box, I'm just going to draw a little one. I'm going to hit control C on my keyboard for copy. And then I'm going to jump back to my Revit file and I'm actually going to go to the reference level control V. And I now have a scope box in my family. If I select it, I have a scope box that's named scope box one. We're all good to go. A little history of where this came from. I used to create Revit families for an architecture firm and work in the family environment a lot more than I do these days. And I always tested things. One of the things that I found while working within a Revit family is that the properties palette has a scope box parameter in it still because reference planes can be assigned to scope boxes. So back then I did get curious. So this does work all the way back to Revit 2014, 2013 even. I was curious, so I tried copying a scope box and what do you know, it worked, which is pretty cool. The other kind of gotchas is you can't see it in the front view. That's because we have to turn it on in the front view. So if we click on the scope box, click on views visible, you will see that you can't see it in the front left or right views. You can see it in the back by default, but not those ones. So you can actually just come in here and change that so that way you can see it. So if I jump back to front, we do see it now as well. It is really tall. So what I'll do is I'll just drag this to encompass my geometry in a nice way. Same thing for my plan view. So this is my plan view now, just roughly where I want it to be. So that's where I want all my reference planes to be, for instance, and we can actually assign all these to the scope box. So I'm going to do IC on my keyboard for isolate category and I'm going to pick scope box one. And what do you know, all of my reference planes are now aligned. So if we hit HR for reset the hide isolate, as I drag my scope box, all of my reference planes are now behaving how they do in a project environment, which is pretty cool. If I jump to the front view, I could do the same thing here. So I'll drag it a little lower and I'll just tighten it up around the geometry as well. And there are a few that I have to pick in here. So I see for isolate category, and we will go in and we will pick the scope box one. HR to reset that. And now as I drag it, we're good to go. But you are able to use this family just as you would before. So to just double check that, we'll place it in here. And you will see that there is no scope box showing. It's not something that comes through in the family. I'm tabbing, I can't get it. It just stays in there and it's just a view specific element in this case. If I go back in to edit the family, I can drag this. And if I'm done with it and I'm like, eh, I'd feel better not including the scope box. You just delete it and all your reference planes and everything stay cropped down where you had them. So really a cool, quick tip there. It's something that I thought more people knew about, but when I replied to that thread on Twitter, which I'll link below, I realized not everyone knew this trick, copying and pasting between the project environment and the family environment. That's something that I've messed with a whole lot. I have another post regarding adding reference planes to title blocks. I'll link that below as well. Uh, that one's on the Autodesk community blogs, but that one's really cool because you can add more reference planes to your title block using a little hack very similar to this. So yeah, I hope that helps out for anyone who creates Revit families out there. Be sure to try this out. It helps you manage those reference planes in a really great way. So quick Revit tip for this week, but I hope that helps out and we will see you in the next video.